Hey guys, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be going over logarithmic regression in Ethereum. Uh, I made a video yesterday on, on this exact thing, but in Bitcoin, and it got a lot of attention, and I received a decent amount of requests to do it for other coins. Um, now the issue with doing it with other coins is that, you know, no coin has been along around as, as Bitcoin has, so there's a wealth of data that we can use to, to um, you know, fit these curves. Um, but anyways, you know, I, basically what I'm doing is I'm using an optimization package, machine learning, that is looking at logarithmic regression, and it's just taking in the raw data of the Ethereum prices, and we're, you know, we're trying to optimize it um, and, and try to get any type of predictions out of it that we can. Um, now, it's not meant necessarily to be predictive of future prices, but it'll give us, you know, what, you know, what some predictions could be given past market behavior. But remember, this is not financial advice to your own research. This is not a, you know, a this is exactly where Ethereum is going video. It's where we could be going um, given these logarithmic trends. Um, so with Bitcoin, just you know, to recap from, from the video yesterday, if you haven't watched it, you, I think you should go watch it. Um, but we basically just, you know, we broke it down into these halvings and we looked at the market cycles. Um, we, we have this curve down here where, you know, Bitcoin basically, you know, it stays on that curve. Um, when it as, as it goes up over a long period of time but you know ultimately this exponential growth that you might see in one market cycle it, it does decay it doesn't keep going up exponentially um, you can see it, it follows um, this logarithmic regression um, type pattern um, so with Bitcoin there was so much data that we were able to you know look at the peaks and the valleys and the price look at percentage gains and then use that um, as well as noting, you know, that we were coming down these lines during each su successive um, bull, bull cycle. So this one came down about three, three of these lines. This one came down about two and, you know, speculating that the next one might come down one or, or, or something like that. And also assuming that we'd be on another four-year market cycle, which remains to be seen. Now we did this and then we were able to get, um, you know, some predictions out of it. Uh, where if past trends continue in the way they have been going, this is where, you know, Bitcoin might be headed. Um, now, with Ethereum, the issue is that there's not nearly as much data. You know, Ethereum, we have data back till 2015, um, but the issue is, you know, there, that's not a lot of data to, to really optimize a, a data set to, or an equation to. Um, so, you know, keep in mind that this is especially dubious in terms of, um, you know, how, how accurate, you know, I would say it, it would be even if it did follow a, a, a typical cycle. For instance, you know, this curve right here, it's entirely possible that we, we drop below where this curve is at, you know, at the present time. It's entirely possible that happens. Um, there's just, we don't have nearly as much data as we do with Bitcoin where we were able to you know, go all the way out um, to really to really fit these logarithmic regression curves. Um, notwithstanding those limitations, we can still you know get these fits and try to get an idea, you know, of what Ethereum has done so far, and then maybe speculate over where it could be headed in the coming years. Um, so if you look, if we if you know if we go all the way back, you can see that from you know from the pit of this bear market to over here. Not that this was really a bear market. I mean, it was just this is why it's hard. Um, uh, to really to really get this data, this is just right when Ethereum was launched, and it was trying to find its true value, valuation before it, it skyrocketed. Um, and it, and you can see that it went up, you know, quite a bit. I mean, it, it went up like three to four or thirty to forty times um, before coming down uh, d down to this point, which is still dubious to say um, it's necessarily a bear market. But we don't really have a whole lot to work with. Um, and then, you know, we saw this huge price increase, which was almost 10,000%. And then now we've come back down to a bottom. And, and you, you, you know, some of you might know that these prices aren't going to be exactly um, matching what you might have seen. Uh, but we're just taking, you know, the candles on um, uh, like an average of different exchanges and then, and then using those values. And I don't really think it makes a, a huge difference um, one way or another. But we're basically saying that around $84 was the bottom over here. Um, and maybe let's, you know, let's continue to, to pretend like this um, same cycle will repeat and we will go up again, um, just like Bitcoin has done. You can see it's, it, it goes to the same cycle over and over again. So if Ethereum does do the same thing and we see it come back up, 
if it holds to the four-year market cycle that Bitcoin is on, um, you know, it, it's going to, it might come back up to one of these lines um, right after 2022. So early 2022 is when it, it might um, potentially happen. So we still have, you know, another um, couple years potentially before we would reach that type of a phase, um, potentially just a according to the four-year market cycle. Now, if we continue this further um, and we say, okay, well, the difference between this one and this one is just 0.78. If we say that's going to happen again from this bear market to this bear market, this bear market being the one that might occur in 2022, if the four-year market cycle continues, then that would put us at a low of $822 in, um, in 2020, maybe the end of 2022, early 2023. Now, you know, I mean, obviously $800 would still be up around um, 10x from that previous um, bear market bottom that we experienced a few months ago. Um, so, you know, and similarly, this was about, you know, 10x higher than this one. And then if you go back to Bitcoin, um, you know, you can see how each bear market, while it does increase, the percentages that it increases get smaller. So we would assume that the percentage that this is going to keep increasing would be smaller from the, the valley of a bear market to the valley of the next bear market. Um, now, if that were to occur, it would put us at around 822, assuming this ratio. But it's possible this ratio could be off and it would be less. Um, and, and that's the case. If you just go over here to early, uh, let's say 2020, um, uh, we'll say, we, you know, let's say it happens in 2022, early 2022, then that might put us at $500 um, if we if we come up and then, and then uh, have a strong correction. Now, the funny thing is it's hard. Well, it's not funny. It's just hard to know which one of these logarith logarithmic regression lines we would come up to in the event of a mania phase. Now, you can see previously that this yellow line that, that comes up right here, we, we hit it over here where we started. And we also hit it again up here. If we were to continue on that logarithmic regression line and we were to hold out until 2022, then that would put Ethereum at 46 grand. Now, I don't think Ethereum is going to even come close to hitting 46 grand in the next bull, bull run because I think that this is going to, this, we're not going to keep hitting this peak up here on this logarithmic line. If you go back to Bitcoin, you can see again that it's dropping down these curves, you know, it doesn't, each successive bull run, it does not make it as high up on each curve, which ultimately would mean that we're converging to a value. So you can imagine if you were to extend this another two or three cycles, where, you know, Bitcoin would start converging to more of a stable value and not seeing these massive um, run-ups. Um, you can see that from peak to peak, the percentage gains are getting smaller and smaller. So it, it's possible that if you know if we have if it's about 0.45 a, a couple more times then from peak to peak the the change might only be say like 150% or something and i know to a lot of you if you're if you're not that familiar with cryptocurrency 150% sounds insane um, and that's that's from peak to peak not from the bear market to the peak that would be much higher um, but let's just give you an idea now i think if if we continue um, a typical market cycle that Bitcoin is on uh, um, undergone, um, then I think, and Ethereum, and assuming Ethereum, you know, takes off with Bitcoin or after Bitcoin takes off or at some point, and I think, I think if there is another crypto bubble, I mean, Ethereum is going to be one of the primary candidates to be part of that, um, considering all the coins that are built off of it. We have um, so many different uh, things being built on top of Ethereum. Um, there's like, you know, the comp compound finance, um, there's, you know, there's so many different things with liquidity pools and decentralized um, finance. And um, there's so many different things that we could get into as to as to what might spark another um, mania phase. Um, but let's assume we drop down a, a few of these lines, which I think is pretty rational to, to think that we're not going to continue to hit these the, this yellow line up here, especially since Bitcoin couldn't even continue hitting its um, highest uh, logarithmic regression line that it, it once hit. If we were to drop down a few of them, um, you know, it might put us at around nine to 15,000 in, you know, the peak of the next um, bull run, which I think, 
you know, I think it's it's not out of the out of the realm that that could happen, especially if Bitcoin is going to six figures. You know, it, it's not necessarily that unheard of that Ethereum could potentially be about a tenth of what Bitcoin is. Um, so, you know, I think that's important to, to consider. I mean, currently Ethereum is is only around 180 or so. So, you know, a tenth of, or, you know, if we were to multiply that by 10, we're at 1800, whereas Bitcoin is clearly much higher. Um, but altcoins have a tendency to, you know, they crash harder than, than Bitcoin, but they also, um, uh, you know, have the potential to go up much higher, I think, just because they're, you know, they're, they're newer and there's more speculation. They haven't, they're not as established. Um, and people are going to be speculating over, you know, what could be occurring uh, with Ethereum if it, if it really starts to take hold and we see more and more global adoption. Um, so, you know, I, I, again, this is not meant to necessarily be a predictive model. It's just to show if, if past trends were to potentially play out, this is where it might put us. Now, the interesting thing is that um, uh, this, was, this was obtained using um, uh, percentage increases and, and whatnot. But if you, also, if you also follow the logarithmic regression lines, um, it will also put you um, right around where uh, these, uh, you know, these numbers would come up if you just follow um, you know, typical ratios that Bitcoin did. So um, I hope you guys like this content. I, again, I'm sure I'll get some comments saying, you know, you can't predict the future based on the past. And I would agree with you. So I will tell you that I agree with you when you make those comments. Um, but please like and subscribe if you like the content. I'll be sure to post more content in the future. I'll also have some uh, information about my Twitter and Telegram if you guys want to join that. Uh, but I think that's it for this time. Uh, I will post. I will also post this graph on Twitter if you if you want to look at these charts for yourself and and not have to load my video anytime you want to look at it. All right, that is it for this time. Until next time, guys. Bye.